Hello, good morning to you, my wonderful students. How are you today? I believe you are doing very well. Welcome to class. Um, Dakori Moloye, and so I'll be taking you adjectives under English language. Let's run through uh, learning objectives for this class. At the end of this class, you guys should be able to define adjectives. Very simple. You should be able to list and explain types of adjectives, numeric adjectives and the likes. You should be able to list them. You should be able to use adjectives to form meaningful sentences. And I'm talking to senior school students, so all this should not be a big deal to you. Then you should be able to identify easily adjectives in sentences. You have to note them easily in sentences. And lastly, you should be able to use that different types. Use the different types of adjectives in sentences appropriately. Let's do a quick correction to our last class work, our assignments. Last class, I said you should go and work on the following. I said, state the grammatical name and functions of the underlying expression. This expression states the grammatical name. This is quite simple because this is coming after a noun. Remember I told you, most times when you see the expression coming after a noun, your answer should be adjectiva, adjectiva, because it's going to be qualifying the noun, adjectiva clause, adjectiva clause. And for the function, it qualifies the noun car, it qualifies the noun car. Second one, whichever restaurant you pick is fine by me. This is coming as a first element in the sentence, and it's coming before a verb. Definitely, it's a noun clause. It's a noun clause. Why? I told you all noun clauses are replaceable with a noun or a pronoun. I can tell you, Dimeji is fine by me. Okpa is fine by me. He is fine by me. The pronouns and the nouns I've said have replaced this expression. I've replaced this expression. So that is one indication that you are dealing with the noun clause and for the function very simple the function as coming before the verb is subject of the verb is this is a verb is subject of the verb is then to the next one which is this he didn't believe she was having an affair why because he loved her because he loved her this is simple that's answer the question why. And this kind of question will only come up under one type of clause, which is the adverbia. The adverbia clause. So definitely it's an adverbia clause. And the function is very simple. It's modifying the verb, modifying the verb was having. Modifying the verb was having. Then this comes up now. Once they saw the car coming. The birds flew away. The birds flew away from the road. This is the verb. This is a condition for the verb to happen. It's of time. What time? When did the birds flew away? When? And this can only happen under a type also. And that type is the adverbia. Only adverbia has this kind of illustration asking for time, place condition manner and stuff like that which I have taught in the last class then I know someone someone I know someone whose father served in the in World War II this is a pronoun someone is a pronoun I told you immediately something an element comes after a noun or a pronoun definitely it is modifying that pronoun and in this case only a type of clause can modify or qualify a pronoun that type of clause is the adjectiva adjectiva clause adjectiva clause and simply put the function is it is modifying or qualifying the pronoun someone modifying or qualifying the pronoun someone the pronoun someone number six choose a gift for whoever you want Choose a gift. This is quite simple. Coming after a preposition. Coming after a preposition. And I told you, you can say choose a gift for 
Kemi. Choose a gift for Biola. Choose a gift for him. Choose a gift for us. Because we can replace them. Because we can replace this expression either, this expression with different nouns and different pronouns. Definitely it is working as what? As a noun clause. As a noun clause. And for the function, it is coming after a preposition. Very simple. Very simple. I know the answer is in your mind already. That's your mind. That is what that is working as complement of the preposition for. Complement of the preposition for. And lastly, the store. Store. Where the phone was being bought. Which store? This is a noun. This is a noun. And mind you, it is coming after a noun. You don't say because of this thing. Because of where? You say it's I type no, it is qualifying this, not the action. Hello, you following me? It is qualifying this store. Which store? So not the is not pointing to any action here. Although it's as we are in it, it's pointing to this store. So definitely, this is a case of adjectiva. It's an adjectiva, adjectiva clause, adjectiva clause, and it is what it is modifying. It's qualifying a noun store. Modifying qualifying a noun store. Yes. Last last we spoke on clauses and the types. I told you a clause is meaningful and grammatically correct. And I told you we have two types of clause. We have the subordinate and uh, the main clause. And I told you now the main clause, the main clause is majorly a simple sentence. Yes, the main clause is a simple sentence. And subordinate clause is a type of clause that has to be attached to other parts of the sentence to make meaning. And under them, I said we have three types of clauses. We have the adjective, the adverbia, and the noun clause. That is under the subordinate, and I told you their functions. I tell I will qualify a noun, a pronoun. This adverbia will modify a verb, an adjective, or another hard verb. And for a noun clause, it's, it will function in these six ways. In these six major ways, I call them S, SV, CP, APN, OC, OV, SC. This is just to enhance Quick reminder, my SC, my SC is the same thing as subject complement, my OV is object complement, my OC is object complement, my SV is subject of the verb, my CP is complement of the preposition, and my APN is apposition to the noun. Apposition to the noun. Let's run now, let's run. Let's see what an adjective is. An adjective modifies or qualifies a noun or a pronoun by describing, providing descriptive and specific details. They provide descriptive and specific, they describe nouns or pronouns. And uh, they, can be, they can describe them in these forms, in these various forms. It can be in color form, it can be in opinion form, you can see examples in front of them. It can be in sizes form, it can be in age form, it can be in shape form, it can be in shape form. Then, it can also be in origin form, like Italian, telling you the source. It can be material form, metal wood. You can, you can have wooden glass, metal glass. It can be distance, long shots, it can be temperature, it can be in time form, and the likes. Then let's let's see examples now. This is an adjective that is telling the state of my sister here. Sad. The same thing here is working for us, describing us. Old here is age. Describe my grand my grandfather. Then let's go to types of adjectives. Let's run through types of adjectives. Types. The first one is a qualitative or descriptive adjective. Let's say it here. A qualitative. This tells you the quality. Mind you, the quality of a noun or a pronoun. This is telling you of the quality of the of the dog, a brown, a big house, a tall girl. That's telling you the quality. Then excellent results. Quality of the results. 
this tells you quality note that word quality that this one is derived from a proper noun got it from a proper noun that is it must start with a capital letter and most times they are they are names of country yeah they are majorly origins origins yes french class i attend french class french there is not a noun but an adjective qualifying class the spanish Shall you like Spanish food? Spanish. Spanish there is an adjective that is qualifying food. They buy European cars. They buy European cars. European there is an adjective qualifying car. That is telling you about the origin. So that are, they are called proper adjectives because they are derived from proper nouns. Then demonstrative or limiting. This one has to do with illustrating with body gesture, the type of adjective. And there are four in number. We have that, this, those, and this. Let me make a correction here. This should be this. The plural of this. This should be this. And mind you, the four of them demonstrate. There is no way you can mention any of them without pointing. That car. You can't say that car and stand stagnant. No, that is not done. This room, this room has to tell you the room is here. You are, in the, you are in the room. These trees, these trees, these trees, plural. You have to point to the trees. Then those books are mine. You have to point to the books also. So these four are the major examples of demonstrative and limited items that we have. They are just four in number. Then we have the interrogative items. These ones ask questions. They come before nouns and they stylishly ask questions you have here whose book is this whose book which way should we go how can we solve you know in short, in short we call them wh adjectives we call them wh adjectives mind you this is wh also because it has h o w in it so we call them wh you can say what time what time? What time is dinner? What time is dinner? What time? What year is? Tell me about time. About time. So they are called WH adjectives because they ask. They ask questions. They ask questions. Let's cancel this. A. This A should not be here. You can say they ask a questions. Then we have coordinate adjectives. These ones they. Consist of two or more adjectives separated by a comma. Instead of using a coordinating conjunction like and, bet, or, you use a coordinate adjective by using comma in between your words. E.g., now we have this a cold, raining day. I would have said a cold, a rainy day. Yes. But to avoid using an air, I have to use a comma. To show that they are coordinate adjectives. The same thing applies here. A bright and shining car. But to avoid using an here, I try to put comma here to show that I am illustrating a coordinate adjective. I can tell you a big black Italian bag. A big, a big black Italian bag. These are coordinates adjectives that qualify the noun bag. Qualify the noun bag. Then I have compound adjectives now. Compound. You know what the compound word is? Don't, don't, don't. I remember those days when we used to joke about it in school. We tell you there are words in a compound, or there are words that live in a compound just to make last fun. Then a compound word makes use of is made up of two or more words. Made up of two or more words. So a compound adjective is made up of two or more words. A compound adjective is made up of two or more words. E.g., 19th century is a compound adjective. That's one. Then you can have big added tree. Or two 
edged sword. They are majorly formed. And mind you, there's, a, there's something you must note. They at times use iframe. It's punctuated with or without an iframe. They can use iframe. Or at times they might not use iframe. A word like full addy. Full addy does not need an iframe. An iframe. Let's go on. Let's go to determiners. As I said, you know determiners. We have article D, article A, article and, and some. S O M E. These are determiners. And at times they can work as I said because they limit. Yes, good. They will limit. They will tell you the quantity, the limit, the boy, one boy, that boy, the boy. Article A, also limiting. And uh, we have them in different forms. See, an article as a terminal. Then we have possessive adjectives that also determine. We have relative adjectives that determine. They are relative pronouns, but they work as adjectives. The same thing here, the de descriptive, sorry, demonstrative that I told you about the other time. The indefinite, they determine. The cardinal, that's as with number, they also determine. Then the ordinal, the positioning adjectives, second, first. And the last one is the possessive proper adjectives. They are possessive nouns, sorry, they are proper nouns that work as adjectives. When I tell you, Bumi's bag, Bumi's book. Let's try and note all these examples. Then we have adjectives in the superlative and comparative form. We are very familiar with this. These are things we've done in primary school. Primary, primary one at the earliest. This is describing adjectives in degrees. Describe them in degrees. We have our big, bigger, biggest. We have our tall, taller, tallest. That's those things which we, which we joke as good, Good or goodest. Now we now have bad, bad, or baddest. These are all wrong ones. But they are in two forms. We have the regular and the irregular. Here we have examples of items compared in the regular and regular mixed up. We have comparison here. This is the positive. This is the main item itself, the positive forms. The main thing, then this is a comparative form that is used for two or more people. Comparative is used for two or more people, and this is the superlative. This goes for three or more people. Study this table very well. It goes for three or more people. And uh, like I was saying at that time, the regular now. Regular is formed by adding er or est. And most time they use more or most to form their. Comparative and superlative. And you can see long year, regular, longer, longest. You can see sweet, sweeter, sweetest. Lovely, lovelier, loveliest. These are regular adjectives. But when you have the regular one, they are comparative and superlative are not formed the conventional way. They are not formed by adding any of this. They are formed irregularly. Let me just what irregularly. That is, they are not constant. See, you see, good, better, best. You have oh, war, bad, worse, worst. You have well, you have little, less, least. These are irregular items because they are not formed the usual way. Then, in conclusion, I have said items qualify nouns or pronouns, and they can be in number, they can be in shape, they can be in color. And uh, they can compare in terms of positive, superlative, and comparative. And I believe this is just a reminder of what you have done before. You are quite familiar with the topic. Then for reference, try and go through these books. They will help you and boost your knowledge of adjectives. Because adjectives help in writing well. With them, you can describe events. You can describe things in lovely ways. That will capture the imagination of the reader. That will, that will keep the reader stuck to you. So, the knowledge of adjectives will not only boost your sp spoken English, it will boost your level of writing. To boost your level of writing. And for 
your assignments. Lay your hands on this assignment and do them. Let's find additives in the following sentences. I expect everyone to get 7-7. Seven, seven. Because as senior school students, I expect to get 7-7 seven, seven easily. Easily. So you and and underline all additives in these sentences. And uh, you can submit to me before next class or you wait for next class for us to mark together in class. It's a pleasure speaking to you this, after, this morning. I enjoy every bit of the class. I'm also sure you did. Thank you for coming. I'll see you again next class. God bless you.